let me uh, at the end give you another example where I show you how the uh, looking at the response for each mode individually will give you an insight into the uh, dynamic behavior of the structure also. Currently this example was using response spectrum analysis. But what about the linear time history analysis for example? Uh, we will perform an, a linear time history analysis for an example structure and we will see that um, how the structure would like to vibrate in a particular frequency if it match with the frequency of the applied loading also. So now let's shift to another structure and instead of using response spectrum analysis let's say we use the uh, linear time history analysis and use a dynamic force uh, which represents your any actual force maybe uh, and then use that uh, to demonstrate the uh, effectiveness of uh, the, the modal contributions and all that. So let me just open another example structure now and this is uh, a 10 story building I think let me just quickly open it and then show you its basic features. It is also a reinforced concrete uh, building with uh, reinforced concrete beams and columns. So this is a reinforced concrete frame structure. It's a very simple structure. And uh, uh, what I would like to do here is that define an applied loading which is dynamic in nature. And let's change the frequency of that uh, applied loading and uh, let's match it with the first mode and then maybe second mode of the building and see how the responses will change by just changing the frequency of the applied loading. So here um, let me first quickly see the mode shapes of that uh, particular structure. So let me go to display and show tables and in that in the uh, structure output in the modal information uh, let me see the modal mass participation ratios. So here I can see that the first mode actually is, uh, is the first mode in y direction because it has the highest contribution in y direction. Second mode is the first mode in x direction, 78% contribution in uh, x direction. Then the second highest uh, contribution in x direction is the fifth mode which becomes the second mode in x direction and then third mode in x direction. Similarly, uh, this will become the uh, uh, mode 6 will become the second mode in y direction and then similarly so on. This is not a high rise building so only first two modes I will demonstrate because they will contribute the maximum towards the maximum dynamic response. Even you can see that the first mode is around 78% uh, mass is participating in x and y directions respectively. So, uh, uh, so my first mode time period is 1.2 second. In, in particular direction let's say x direction and the second mode in the same direction is 0 0.4 seconds 0 0.4 seconds so what I have done here in this example that I have applied uh, forces constant forces uh, at top of this structure on one edge in x direction let me just show you those forces uh, I can display the load assigns and these are the joint forces which I defined in a pattern which is defined by the name of lateral loads. So you can see here, let me just rotate it. Not like actually, yeah, here. From maybe this side it is more visible. So you can see here that I have just applied four forces, uh, 100 in the units which I am using here which is kilonewton. Uh, in x direction of the building so this is the x direction of the building global x direction and those four forces are actually uh, added to a load pattern which is named as lateral loads and it has a type of other right so those are defined in the lateral load pattern and then that pattern is called in a uh, load case which is a dynamic load case but obviously in order to make a loading dynamic we must define a function first so we define functions and time history and in time history what I did is that I defined two uh, two functions uh, two sign functions actually 
first is sine function m1 let me modify it to show you how it looks like it is a time history of around uh, 23 or 24 seconds and it has 20 number of cycles but the main impo important point is that its time period of this harmonic force uh, history uh, is uh, sine function is same as the first mode time period of the structure and similarly I define another sine function called sine function m2 and this time I again have uh, 20 number of cycles this is around um, 8 8 second time history uh, so because the second mode has a time period which is significantly lower than first mode around one third of first mode therefore it will complete its uh, 20 cycles in around 8 seconds so this uh, function have a time period which is uh, the time period of the second mode of the structure itself and then I defined another sine function which has a uh, time period somewhere in between first and second mode 0 0.6 second and again 20 cycles uh, of loading which will complete in around 12 seconds so I have defined three sine functions one have a frequency same as the first mode of the building one have the frequency same as the second mode of the building and the third one have a frequency somewhere in between first and second mode now I can uh, just uh, define a load case and assign these four forces with this sign functions so first one I define a linear modal uh, time history case uh, it's called lateral loads m1 let me modify it to show what I did in here I have applied these lateral loads which is the four forces here on top of the structure I select them uh, that pattern and I assign it with a function of sign function 1 so these 100 kN forces will be uh, become dynamic in nature with uh, a frequency equal to uh, uh, same as the first mode of the structure but the amplitude of that sine function and all the sine functions was 1 so they won't modify the the amplitude of the the dynamic forces so let me again go back to functions and show you that all of these sine functions which I define with different frequencies have an amplitude equal to 1 so when they multiplied with the particular uh, static loading they won't be modifying the amplitude of that loading they will just make them dynamic in nature so they will be simply uh, multiplying the history with that number so again I go to define load cases and in that I have first dynamic time history load case you can see here that its type is time history and in that I have just multiplied those four lateral forces this pattern with the sine function m1 which has the frequency of the first mode of the building mode modal case you have to select damping is 5% and the number of output time steps and step size should match with the with the function which you have defined and for this particular demonstration since it is uh, the just for the purpose of showing the the shape of the responses I just use scale factor as one otherwise when you will be actually doing the linear time history analysis you will be applying the code prescribed uh, factors in the scale factor also similarly the second one will have a second function now the same forces will be applied in this case but this time their frequency will be higher matching with the second mode shape uh, of the structure third one again the same one but this time its frequency will be somewhere in between first and second mode so now let's run the actual dynamic analysis under these four dynamic forces and since all of them uh, are applying at the top of the structure so we will see that uh, the response will look completely different for all three cases although their amplitudes are same all what is different is actually their their frequency right so uh, let's now see go to the analyze because I've already run the analysis so I can just simply show you the story response plots and in that let's say I select the maximum story displacement and in the case I select the lateral loads m1 which means that uh, this is the case in which the uh, dynamic forces at the roof are applied 
but it has a frequency equal to the first mode of the structure which was in the x direction so uh, in that particular case let's select the maximum response uh, in that particular case and this is the story displacement you can see here that the shape uh, of the maximum story displacement profile uh, is similar to the first mode uh, of the structure because uh, uh, the dynamic loading was applied uh, with a frequency equal to the first mode so the structure primarily responded uh, just like uh, the first mode vibration right so the contribution from second mode third mode would be negligible because the frequency of first mode matches with the frequency of applied loading and therefore it has resonance in the first mode and have a significantly larger response in first mode compared to the second and third modes but if you look at the same uh, the the load case which corresponds to the same four dynamic forces but this time their frequency was changed to the second mode of the structure this is the peak story displacement which looks like the second mode response which we have just uh, saw how it looks like in the response spectrum analysis but this is coming from the linear time history analysis and this is the peak story displacement profile we will animate the structure also in a moment and we will see that in this lateral loads m2 load case where the same top forces were given a frequency equal to the second mode shape second mode of the structure uh, the structure mainly responded in the second mode uh, uh, contribution because uh, the second mode had a resonance and the first and third mode had significantly lower displacement contributions compared to second mode similarly if we could have done it for third mode we would see that the third mode contributed the most in that particular third mode resonance case right similarly we can see for example story shear but even before going that let's see the case where we applied the same four forces but with a frequency which is somewhere in between first and second mode so you will see that now the peak story displacement profile is also somewhat a combination of first mode profile and the second mode profile the shape is somewhere in between so see again this is first mode this is second mode and this is somewhere in between first and second mode which is a combination of first and second mode profiles so uh, now let's uh, go to story shear so you can see here story shears we can select so uh, let's say m1 let's first select m1 this is how the first mode story shear looks like uh, and uh, we know that in this particular load case we are causing a resonance in first mode only therefore the st overall story shear looks like the story shear of first mode only if i select the second mode case here you can see the story shear looks like the second mode story shear just like the r uh, sign as we have seen in the excel sheet uh, in the response spectrum analysis but if i select somewhere in between m1 and m2 case it is also a mix of first and second mode you can see that profile has a combination of first mode profile and a second mode profile so by just looking at the shape of uh, global or uh, story responses you can guess about the relative contribution of different mode shapes also so we can actually demonstrate it by forcing the structure to cause a resonance in a particular vibration mode so let's now uh, uh, see it in in animation view let's say this is my elevation view and these four forces were applied on these top nodes so let's uh, plot the displacement uh, for the m1 case where the lateral top forces were tuned to the frequency of the first mode of the building so let me just uh, select multi step from maybe 0 to let's say 20 seconds let me type 20 and click apply so you will see the and then you can start animation so here you can see that the structure actually started with very low amplitude and uh, as the more and more cycles were applied from the same horizontal forces the amplitude increase so uh, the and this also confirms that the resonance builds uh, cycle by cycle so you can again see that it starts with very low amplitude but as uh, uh, the time pass 
the amplitude keeps on increasing because it's the resonance case so you can see all the 200 steps in the same time so you can see here that uh, the amplitude starts with very low number and then it keeps on increasing keeps on increasing up till the end of the load case so let me just uh, uh, go for the second mode this time and this time let me select some higher uh, exaggeration factor for uh, for the visualization of displaced shape because the second mode displacement is significantly lower than first mode so i can give a higher scale factor so again i can start animation and you can see here that the same forces same amplitude but this time their frequency is tuned to the second mode shape now they are causing the structure to primarily vibrate in the second mode shape so you can see here that the structure starts from very low amplitude and quickly because second mode have a high higher frequency than first mode so it can quickly uh, reach to the maximum displacement in that second mode right so the shape is same as the second mode shape but if i select somewhere in between case later loads m1 and m2 and again apply you will see that now the displacement shape will be a mix of first mode uh, shape and the second mode shape so let me just select this one multi step and later loads m1 and m2 and start animation so here you can see uh, let me just click on apply also because i think it is still showing the same previous load case so let me first stop this animation and then click on apply so now i click apply this case and then apply and then let me just animate it so now you can see that it is swaying at the same time showing a, a contribution of second mode also so it is not a fundamental sway now it is a fundamental sway as well as uh, somewhat contribution from second mode also so it's a mix of first mode and second mode you can see it again or visualize it again maybe i can increase its scale factor for a better clarity maybe make it 80 and then i can uh, show you that it is a mix of first and second mode so let me just move it somewhere here i stop this animation and then apply it again with a new scale factor and then see that now it is fundamental sway in x direction as well as sometimes when top story is moving right the bottom is going towards left so a mix of first and second mode shape so similarly we can uh, demonstrate the similar concept using other responses also and we can also include third mode if we wanted and uh, this would give us a far better insight into the dynamic response of the structure uh, uh, compared to if we only get the combined response and cannot see its composition so again i would repeat uh, one of the major applications of this idea is when you want to control the vibrations control the dynamic response you have to identify which mode is contributing the most and what is the location of peak response in that particular vibration mode so that you can design the optimum location and optimum frequency for a particular control mayer a damper or any other control device you would want to design right 